Okay, so something weird happened, and I somehow watched the third episode of Girl Meets World under the impression it was the second episode of Girl Meets World. But now I've actually watched the second episode of Girl Meets World, and this is what I think of it. So, <laughs> as I said in the intro, um, I put up a review earlier of an episode of Girl Meets World entitled Girl Meets Sneak Attack, which I thought was the second episode of Girl Meets World. Turns out it is the third episode of Girl Meets World, which airs next Friday. I was watching on WatchDisneyChannel.com. I figured, oh, you know, this is this week's episode. Turns out it's next week's. I don't know why that happened, because I couldn't even find the second episode on um, Watch Disney Channel until today, so I was a little confused. Uh, so hope you understand my confusion. I don't know if you were doing the same thing. You got confused too. <laughs> Let me know. Um, but let's get into reviewing Girl Meets Boy, which is the second episode of Girl Meets World. So this episode focuses basically on a huge social commentary of the world today and how everyone is addicted to their cell phones. Their lives are in their cell phones. Um, and they make a lot of nods to, you know, older generations, you know, like, generations basically before the, the 2000 era babies, because, you know, they didn't know a world without cell phones, and I grew up in the 90s, you know, I saw my first cell phone when, like, right when they first came out, and they were, like, what, that little brick that was like this, um, and I thought it was very interesting, um, so, I don't know, <laughs> I think that, uh, this episode is very good on doing the social commentary. Um, I did enjoy this episode very much overall. It's probably my favorite out of the three episodes so far that I've seen, even though I've only, I should have only seen two. I'm going to stop with that. But out of the three episodes I've seen, this is probably my favorite. Um, they did a very good job of writing. Uh, the writing this episode felt very good. Um, there were little one-liners here and there that were great. I think Farkle's character had uh, some very good parts in it, uh, even though he just annoys me sometimes, like with Farkle time. Like, I'm Farkle! Like, I don't care. Like, that, those parts just annoy me. Like, why must you do that? Um, so I hope they kind of tone him down a little bit, but not too much to the point where it changes his character too much yet. Um, over a couple seasons, uh, you know, like in the original Boy Meets World, characters will change, characters disappear, that you don't even know what happened, um, including Farkle's dad, a.k.a. Minkus, from the first season of Boy Meets World, which is, po and he just pops up in, like, the end of season five. Uh, so, yeah, so let's see what happens with that. Um... But a couple of points of this episode I want to mention. Uh, Lucas gets a little bit more to his character. Uh, we learn a little bit more about him from when he was in Texas. You know, he raised horses, which is kind of cool. Uh, so they're giving him a little bit more characterization. Um, but I'm still wanting more from him. It might just be the actor who's portraying him. Um, I don't know. It's just a little weird. Uh, but, yeah, I, I want more from... I want more from Lucas. So we'll see what we get. Um, Maya, I think that she's probably the strongest part of the show, aside from Corey, uh, because, you know, everyone loves Corey Matthews. Um, I think Maya's very good, a uh, very strong, uh, role, very much as, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get tired of saying it, but she's the Sean of the show. I mean, she's the opposite of, you know, the, the my the, uh, Riley character who's kind of, you know, upper middle class. Uh, Maya's a little bit lower, uh, you know, she doesn't really have everything everyone else has. She doesn't have the people at home looking out for her uh, that she should, so we'll find a little bit more about her character as time goes on. She's definitely one that intrigues me. I'm very interested to see what they do with her. Um, yeah, but overall, this episode was great. Uh, I thought the, the library scenes were very humorous. Um, as I said, the social commentary in this episode was huge. And Corey in this episode, uh, I think the show is almost more about Corey than it is about anyone else, but that's not exactly a bad thing, especially for people like me who grew up watching the show back in the 90s. Uh, so I love seeing Corey, um, you know, being Corey. <laughs> He's like, I, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't want this to happen. Why, why, is, she, why is she doing this? Why, why is this happening? Like, no, 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 stuff like that. I thought that was great. Um, he was the enabler without intending to be the enabler for uh, Riley and Lucas. So we'll see. I, I think that the... <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, and at the end of the episode, I thought it was very... This is a little bit spoiler, so if you don't want to know about anything until you see it, just stop watching. Um, but the part where Corey gives Maya the cell phone, um, I thought that was very, very interesting. Uh, very big for Corey. Uh, you know, it kind of shows him being the Alan Matthews of the show uh, and the, and the Feeney. Because, uh, you know, Alan 
watched out for Sean a lot, you know, just like Feeney watched out for Sean a lot, and Corey's definitely in the mix of the two, so it's definitely going to be good to see where they take all this. Um, overall, very good episode. Comment below what you thought, and did you watch them out of sequence like I did, being confused? Let me know. Comment below. Join me next week for my next Girl Meets World review.